Wrapping a wrap on the 2024 Diamondback season, our final visit of the year with Derek Hall, president and CEO of the Diamondbacks, as he checks in now on the Arizona Sports Line. Derek, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. That's a sad statement, but uh, yeah, it's been a good year. And by the way, thanks again for, for having me on all season. It's a, it's a great way for the three of us to connect, but also for me to connect and communicate with our fans uh it, it's always fun so thanks no, for having me yeah no, no doubt about it how so uh, how gutted are you there's a lot of people that that have been w- with this team invested from day one you obviously are among them um I, yeah. how, how are you processing this Vic, it, it was tough you know monday is something we've never really been through and and for me and the entire organization all of our employees i mean we were you know, on pins and needles, uh, everybody's pacing and everybody's watching together. You know, the first game, it really didn't matter, right? We just, if <laughs> we needed to get that second game to be a, uh, to be a, uh, a sweep and, and, you know, it was, it was emotional and, and for most of our employees to be, you know, hugging and crying afterwards, um, it, it just shows how much they care. You talk about being invested and they are, uh, I didn't miss a, miss a pitch all year. So, I mean, you're just, you're hanging on and you're, and you're hoping. And, and unfortunately we put ourselves in that position. So, I mean, in a sense, you know, I say shame on us, right? I mean, here we were, as I mentioned, pacing and biting our fingernails and watching every pitch. We shouldn't have been in that position. We should have easily won another game or two and, and just put ourselves in the playoffs and not having to worry about that final double doubleheader. So we did it to ourselves after controlling our destiny for so long. I, it stinks, but I agree with you. When, you. when you had it in your hands and let it go, it makes it more painful. And it seems like one of the lasting themes of this season for Diamondbacks fans, Derek, is going to be, what was the game, what was the moment that really served as the death knell or the final nail in the coffin, whatever expression you want to use? What was, what was that game for you, if you have one? Well, I think, Vince, we all go back to the, the final game in, in Milwaukee. As tough as it is to sweep a team on the road, especially in four games, we were in position to do it. When you have an 8 to nothing lead, you really can't lose that game, yet we just could not seem to get out of an inning, uh, and, and it just caught up to us. So I, I think that's the one that really stands out, yet – Going into our final homestand, you know, to have six games, and I remember thinking all we have to do is go 500 on this homestand and we're in the playoffs. Um, and then you get to the final series because you didn't take care of business against the Giants. You lose two out of three. And for the Padres, I thought the same thing. Let's just go win two out of three. And the Padres were basically giving it to us. So, again, I, I don't know if it was just, you know, us gripping a little too much or putting too much pressure on ourselves for that final series or facing a pitcher we hadn't really seen expecting to do too much, being over aggressive, but, but I can't put the blame on any one area or any individual. It, it's just collectively, we didn't do it. Uh, and we had several opportunities yet looking at our team, you know, I'm still really proud. Like I, I, I sent a note out as soon as we were eliminated to all of our organization. And one of the things I pointed out is you can't hang your head for winning 89 games. I mean, you know, that's, a vast improvement over last year. We thought we were much better on paper, and that record shows that we were. And it was an exciting season. To come down to that final day, um, you know, that, that's fun for all of us. It didn't turn out the way we wanted it to, but that's great for our fans, to, for us to be playing very important and, and competitive games late in the season. You just want to be in a position in September, and we clearly were. Um, again, I think we should have done more, and we should have gotten to the playoffs, and that's, that's okay. I, I, I love our team. I'm proud of our guys. Uh, and, you know, we're going to look to improve and, and learn off of what happened this year. And I've still got a great amount of confidence in this roster, and I think our fans do too. There have been times in the past where you've kind of had to soften the candor of, of Ken Kendrick's comments. Uh, his thoughts on Jordan Montgomery are a little different. They, they seem to have resonated with the fans. They seem to be very honest. There was a columnist in Chicago who said, that's what accountability looks like where we've got a White Sox owner who's talking gobbledygook after losing 120-something <laughs> games. Your thoughts on that, Derek? <laughs> that's power packed there, Bick. Um, you know, first off, uh, yeah, I love, I love Jerry Reinsdorf and, and uh, you know, you feel for him in that position. I mean, to break a record for losses, you, you've got to communicate with your fans and he, and he tried to do that. Uh, in the case of, of Jordan, I mean, I, I think there's been so many pointed questions and comments all season long because, you know, I mean, he'd be the first to admit that his numbers were not what they normally are. Mm-hmm. Um, probably very disappointed uh, in, in himself too. But I don't think that, you know, obviously Ken was, Ken was not attacking the, the, the pitcher as much as, or player as much as he was defending, you know, his general manager and his baseball operations staff. Because so often, you know, the finger was, was pointed at, at Mike. But you look at the overall season and, and uh, season of work for Jordan, he, he wasn't himself. Um, obviously, he's a great pitcher, and he, his track record shows that. 
And Mike and I had several conversations where we were seeing him get better and better throughout the season. And he had flashes of who he is, you know, later in the season. And we've also said he's going to be probably back to form next year. This is the first time he's gone into a season without his normal preparation, without a spring training. You know, we, we, we saw that he came in, he tried to speed it up to get going with us even quicker uh, so all that was was new to him and awkward, and and I, you know, would would clearly defend any player in that situation. Um, was it what we expected? A- absolutely not. But you know, we'll see. I think he's going to be more of himself next year, and if he has a full spring training and he gets back into his normal routine, I think uh, you know fans are going to see everywhere. Fans are going to see a Jordan Montgomery that that built that reputation as someone that you could really lean on. Um, even as an ace or, you know, whatever, whatever he does, if, whether it's out of the bullpen or in the rotation, I think you're going to see more of what you used to see in the past. Jordan Montgomery wasn't alone as a, as a top flight free agent who was on the right. sideline for a while mm. and not the only one that struggled either at the beginning of the season. Some of those players like Blake Snell comes to mind. He was able to turn it around. But my question is, and, and not pinning all of this on Jordan Montgomery, but does that experience maybe change the thinking of the organization on signing free agents late in the game such as that? Um, I don't know if it'll change it, Vince. I mean, it, you know, there, it just depends on – you're right. It depends on the timing uh, of when you did it. We did it so late, right? Yeah. So so maybe we learned something from that, but I'm, I'm not sure. You're, you, like you said, some of the players did turn it around. I just think overall – and you can't put it on just one player or one pitcher. I mean, we struggled pitching-wise, which is a – uh, you know, you got to scratch your head and ask why, because that was supposed to be our strength. And and I still look at our rotation, and I would match our rotation up against anybody still today. You look on paper and you think this is a dominant rotation. Yet, you know, we allowed a, a, a ton of earned runs, both relievers and starters, and and that's a head scratcher. I mean, it's um, we were worried or concerned about our our offense. We added slug going into the season. We we were hoping that we could keep up with the opposition. Well, we dominated offensively, and and then we struggled with our pitching and that's not who we are. We're a team and, and Tori's a manager who really stresses pitching and defense. And that's, that's part of what got us through the playoffs last year, that along with our excitement and our speed and our athleticism, which we still have, but we have got to do a better job uh, pitching because we do have the arms. We know we have the talent and we got to get back to it. And if we can uphold some of that offense and then couple that with the, the pitching that we had expected going into the season, we could really be strong. You've got a couple of uh, players with mutual options, Randall Gritchick, Jock Peterson. Uh, there's some some mixed reports as to what you might want to do with them. And then you've got, of course, Christian Walker and his free agency, which he richly deserves and he's been um, gunning for for quite some time here. What are the odds of bringing back Christian Walker? I know it's real early, but you are talking about a hallmark diamond back here. Yeah, so, Bick, we've got to talk about all of that. Um, typically what we do, we, we let the season go a week or two, and then uh, we all sit down, and it's, you know, it's me and, and Mike and his staff and Ken, and, and we go over the entire roster. We go over, you know, everything. We go over coaches. We go over, uh, the, the, obviously, the free agents. We go over those that have the mutual options. But I, I look back, the, the, the names that you just mentioned, they were tremendous, and, and you look at the impact they've made on our roster we did not get to, to where we did last year without Christian, this year without Christian. And then, you know, the, the additions that, that Mike and his staff made with Gritchick and with Peterson, what a difference they made. And, you know, the left-right combo, you had a guy that absolutely mashed, you know, left-handers in, in Randall Gritchick. And then Jock Peterson, just con- consistent all year long uh, against righties. And what a, what a leader, what a great guy is in the clubhouse. And you look at him and every team he's been on seems to win. He's just one of those guys. Like, you know, I'm, I'm watching yesterday, and I think Tommy Pham is one of those guys. Yeah. You know, he just mm-hmm. gets on teams that win, and, and you need guys like that. So we, we have a lot of decisions to make, uh, but they're good decisions to have to make about really good guys and, and good leaders. And I, I personally love Christian Walker as, not only as a player and as a leader, but as a human being. I just think he's a, he's a tremendous guy who continues to grow and develop in front of our eyes, not only as a player, but off the field. Um, you know, I enjoy when he does interviews. I, I like how articulate he is. I think he's got a career in broadcasting if he wants to one day or as a coach. He's just a really smart guy and a smart player. All right, last question for you since it's the last time we're going to talk to you for a while here. Uh, I like the I like the solidarity that you guys have shown after this bitter disappointment with, with Ken coming out and, and, and making it clear that, hey, a lot of this is on me. And I like that Tori and, and, and Mike did that press conference together. What would you say to baseball fans who are either screaming screaming about the manager or screaming, oh, this is another one-hit wonder. How do you guys feel about, look, we're going to get this thing right, just stick with us? 
Absolutely. And, and, and I think there's something to be said about, you know, our longest tenured manager, and it's because we, we do have so much confidence in him. And it's, it's very easy when we're all frustrated to look at a move or two or, you know, watch every single game because we're just clenching, you know, we're trying so hard to stay in it. I get it. It's natural. And it just shows the passion and the, the engagement that our fans have. Um, Tori is, I can just tell you, you know, if people were flies on the wall or they could sit in a clubhouse and watch or in a dugout, this guy is loved by his players. I mean, like, like I, like I haven't seen, and I've been around hall of fame managers, you know, my, my career, my entire career, this guy is a, he's a really good manager. Um, and he covers for his players. He'll take the blame. He he's, um, he's accountable. And to see the dynamics between the manager and the general manager, you need that. Too often in an organization, you have a lot of finger pointing or backstabbing. These guys are on the same page. And as, as you know, one that works with them closely, it makes me really proud. But I would say have confidence in, in Tori, um, you know, and confidence in Mike. These guys know what they're doing. And, again, it wasn't a failed season. It was a failed end of the season. But, but to win nearly 90 games – uh, we were hoping to win 90 plus. I still think we can do that, but um, I, I think the consistency with these guys, the relationship with these guys, the love that they have for their players and for one another, and they will fight. Believe me, they fight, they claw it out. But when that door opens up in the manager's office, they both walk out on the same page. That's all you can ask for in my position. Derek, it has been a pleasure as always to have you on this season every uh, every Thursday. We appreciate your time, your honesty, all of it. Thanks so much. You got it. And thank you guys. And Vic, uh, keep scratching your back and then <laughs> act like you've been there. <laughs> I'll try, Derek. Derek. I'll try. <laughs> right. he always gets the last shot in. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Derek Hall, president and CEO of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Our, uh, our, our main listener. It's all right, man. <laughs> I love it. Somebody's got to keep us honest. Yes, he joined us on the Arizona Sports Line. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.